not really having much success with it. So I went down the list and I thought, all right, let's look for a smaller model and let's see if it could do what I want. And so today's topic, what I'm trying to do is set up a model that can run locally or in a private environment. So it's gotta be small enough for whatever equipment I can get a hold of. And we're gonna remove PHI information. So that's that's what we're really interested. We got some tests where basically you just remove name, addresses, phone numbers. That would be a really good start. So we're gonna use this Wizard Vicuna 13B, which is basically you know a llama model. And what we have here is um, my co-founder Arthur. He kind of redid a nice little collab uh, worksheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and. I'm going to start this so uh, you know I'm in I'm logged into my main Google account and I click the link in his collab notebook and uh, you know off we go let's get that started I think Arthur's about to join let me just check make sure yeah he'll be he'll be on in a minute so Thought at least get this running because you know it takes takes a little bit of while for everything to go through. So oh, here we go. Is that Arthur? streaming yeah I'm streaming I went ahead and um, just explain basically we're we are setting up the uh, the Vicuna 13b uncensored model and that you made a little notebook and a little collab actually tell me about this is this a collab notebook or a Jupyter notebook help, help me understand just the basics here what I just hit play on yeah so what we're working with here is a uh, Jupyter Notebook running on Collaboratory. And Collaboratory is an online platform by Google that takes their huge cloud infrastructure and brings that into a uh, drive-like environment. So you can do kind of word editing um, or the equivalent of that for code. Uh, it's almost like uh, what Drive is to Word docs, this is to something like Visual Studio Code. Cool. So, simple little fun Jupyter notebook running. I mean, I really haven't done many of these. Uh, I'm just starting to do more of these working with you, Arthur. So, um, I have to, it says I have to restart the runtime to use newly installed versions. Oh, wait, am I sharing my screen this whole time? Uh, not yet. Okay. Well, um, let me try to do that too. I know I'm already streaming my screen but that, that'll help you kind of follow along with what i'm doing okay um, awesome. so let's hide those meeting trolls so here's where i'm at i mean is it literally i just need to i mean i don't think you need to restart the runtime okay so how long how long did it take you to run this notebook when you ran it I believe that was about 15 minutes, although I could not tell you the exact time. Okay. We're about to find out though. Okay. So we might, so this video might be just, you know, it's, I'm kind of plugged into a terrible power source. Eh, you know, I'm holding it. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm barely holding it 9 or 10% energy. So we'll see how long the stream can Oops. last. So, um, well, I wish we had an example to talk about, but basically the, this, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, when we get this running, what's gonna happen? I, I think you get a UI out of this somewhere. Ex explain, explain some of the code. Let's, let's, let's walk through, let's walk through what this is while we're waiting. Yeah, so to start with from that top line, we are navigating into a content directory and we are cloning the Ubabuga text UI. Uh, some of y'all might have heard of that. Some of y'all maybe not. 
that is a open source project that is designed to give an interface to large language models, like the kind you see in ChatGPT or uh, Pecunia here. Um, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's go look at their project real quick. So where do we get to see kind of like, they have a website? Okay, here we go. So is it going to look kind of like this? These little, these little screenshots here? Yeah, out of the box, it's actually going to have a light theme. But if we go into the settings, I believe there should be a way to uh, swap it out and make it look a little bit like that. Okay. Yeah, it's going to look exactly like that. OK, and so it looks like I think I saw some controls that maybe adjust temperatures and things like that and like the settings that you put into your language model like this. This Absolutely. one looks like it's got a little a few of those settings. You can uh, uh, modify the temperature, the length, the top B in some cases. Um, occasionally, you can also cause specific strings of logic bias to guide the AI towards certain patterns. Um, there should be some fine tuning interfaces there, as well as I think some of the more modern versions have a form of long short term memory. That relies on a semantic search. Although I could be wrong. Okay. Um, that's what I believe I read a couple of days ago. Okay. So basically, you know, Ooga Booga is a nice little, nice little app. I feel like this is Dockerized and everything like that. And I wonder what it's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. And then I think. Eventually, you download the models and you put it in its models folder, and this this Ooga Booga code is going to kind of be the overall thing that runs it. So, what else? What else we got going on here? Yeah, so we are making some files for the logs. Um, we're moving stuff into the models. We are. If you look at that other GitHub uh, link, that's actually some settings for uh, Ooga. Uba Booga through the Collab Web UI. Click on that for a second. We can see some things that are very interactive that we can use to kind of set up the standard for how this thing works. Okay. So basically, this. Yeah. You can see we have from the top max new tokens. Uh, that just controls the amount of content that is being outputted. We have names for the assistant and the human. Assistant in this case is the large language model. Okay. We have some context. That's kind of like the system message, as well as stop sequences, max prompt size, and a couple of other uh, neat tools to fiddle around with. How much can someone input into this system? Where do we want to set up the limits so that this thing doesn't break when no, it gets slammed with users. Okay. Um, does it have, what's the, hmm. Yeah, we'll have to learn about this model, what the philosophy is, if you get to put, I was, I was reading that Vicuna didn't really have um, some of the things that like Falcon and GPT had, like uh, directives, like summarize this and whatnot. So it's a little more of a prompt engineering type model that you got to work around with so it looks like that finished should i run in four minutes should i run the next is there a part two i need to run yeah so if you go down to the other cell um right below there you, you just passed it a second ago okay oh oh just one little slim line okay is this yeah uh, what's what's the main thing going to do here this is you can download the model or what no, that's actually going to run a server that's going to attach to Uba Booga and give us a local IP that's running things as well as a public URL served through tunnels. It should also give us some API information, although I have not tested the API information yet. Okay. Um, you click run there, we're going to see some things start going through the screen. Real quick before I run it, I just want to know, like, 
sorry we didn't finish using that four minutes to walk through where do where do we download the model and then where do we kind of like squish or quantize the model down to four bit or anything like that help me understand that the model's pre-quantized uh if you want to see the part where we actually download the model that is under that content slash text yeah python download model dot pi okay so, so, so it already did it, it already did that big you know process it's i mean it's not that big of a model but right cool that, that helps me out understand that a little bit so how long does this this part take is this like a long process here or pretty quick Somewhere between 15 seconds and a minute, okay. depending on the stability of your internet connection and the size of your model, uh, as well as the instance that you're running on Collab. So what about all these warnings about like CUDA extensions not installed? Like, what, is, what does that mean? Like, it's not going to use the CUDA cores to speed up or something? <laughs> I mean... What? That means we're using some cutting edge stuff and some of it's not quite polished off and the devs are still working on some things okay. uh, but it's good enough to go live with and interact with and communicate with so for now it's good enough for me because okay. things might throw some errors in the future so we'll, we'll have to watch out for them okay and tell me about the tunneling so Help me understand. I stalling for like live socket interaction with the model, or why? Why are we tunneling? What? What's, what are we tunneling to and from? We're tunneling from this internal environment inside of the Google Colab to an external UI. Um. Ooh, okay. So we're running into an error here. And that error is that you don't have cloud flared. So if you could go up to the earlier section real quick. Okay. Um, I believe cloud flared is being used in the tunneling for the API, not UI. Mm -hmm. uh, it may take a second to have cloud flare fully installed. And based on what I've seen earlier, this looks like the same error. The issue here is that it's trying to use the same process to install Cloudflare and to use Cloudflare, which is why we got some of those angry messages at the bottom. But if you click on that link that it's given you in the second block of code, it should be redirected to a live interactive environment. Okay, so let me even find, okay. So you, okay, so Cloudflare was going to be some kind of a facade that we could have gone to first, and this is like a direct public URL link. Yeah, this, this is an interface as opposed to an API. Okay. Um, oh, gotcha. Awesome. Looks okay. like on your computer we are getting the dark theme out of the box. Because I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool like that. Yeah, right. yeah. So, instruct. What, what's the difference between instruct, chat, instruct, and chat? Do you know? These are variations on fine tunes. Specifically, instruct will be tuned on a number of prompts that have a instruction and the equivalent uh, completion of that instruction, mm -hmm. as opposed to chat, which is in fine tune on a number of human communications. This is on top of the base model and utilizes some key strings to guide the model towards what mode it is in specifically. Cool. Well, hopefully, I think you did yours in instruct. Uh, went to the corner store called as they paid, they got in a fight with 
Dave. And then, all right, so let's see. Uh, you tried some prompts as simple as uh, what? Remove, redact all private information or? I believe I gave that a caption at the beginning uh, that said something along the lines of uh, undeidentified information, a colon at the end of it. Okay. And then I said something along the lines of replace all sensitive information with the words redacted, and redacted is in brackets. Uh, uh, which what, did you, what did you say? Replace all uh, sensitive or private information? What did you say? Don't remember the exact prompt, although I believe both of those should work. Okay. Uh, what what was the opening uh, label or prompt you gave it? Uh, what'd you put up here? Um, I believe I said uh, something along lines of undeidentified information and I said to modify that reference that by uh, string oh gosh how do you spell this word all right let's let's start with the word de-identified d you should try identifiable information identify God, I can't spell information. Okay. You that sounds good. De-identifiable. Okay. So, all right. But, all right. So replace all sensitive. I say de-identifiable information from before, just so it knows exactly which part of the context we're referencing. Let's try it. Wait. You'll note it says is type, and right now it's just encoding that entire string into numbers. These will be used to generate the inference. So far, so good. Awesome. So I didn't explain to the other people. So, I mean, we're trying to remove kind of private health information or identifiable information because we're working on a project that basically is going to need to talk to us. Well, I don't know, maybe Vicuna is good enough. It doesn't, <laughs> maybe we don't need to talk to, you know, chat GPT. Uh, but the idea was we wanted to have sensitive diary information cleaned up on a local server like this, this redacted information, and then take this redacted text, send it over to ChatGPT, which, you know, really is a premier model. It's, it's really, really intelligent model. And have it give us answers about what's going on in that, that diary entry. So... The theory is if we could run it through a local ML model, get this data back out, we'd feel better about sending it over to GPT, even though in the app, we are going to ask permission. Would we be, you know, user, you know, you give us, you give us permission to send this over to the AI over an open AI and ask it questions. They're going to say yes. But, you know, legal staff for the client we're working for, you know, definitely, you know, HIPAA compliant, you know, expert, you know, made it really clear, look, if you ever get brought up in court and you didn't show that you made your best efforts, you know, to, uh, to redact the information, then you, you, you might, you might get hit with a lawsuit. So we're just making all best efforts, you know, to do that. Right. So, yeah. So. All right, um, there's some kind of noise coming coming through the phone. I don't know, it's kind of like a, every so often like a loud noise. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, this, that's, that's, <coughs> that's exactly kind of what you want. So let's try a different prompt. prompt. Um, oh, am I able to? Yeah, we can change prompts. At some point we'll run out of memory. No, 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 uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to change it. I want to change the prompt. How do I just start over? Go down to uh, clear history. Okay, cool. Confirm. Cool. So there we go. Let's let's try something like this. So let's just do diary. And then I'm just gonna say place all Place the diary entry with, uh, let's see, replace all names with name, locations with address, and This isn't as broad, but I'm just curious what it'll do with. As an aside here, the mm -hmm. use of the angle brackets in addressing specific topics such as names, addresses, and numbers uh -huh. will the names, addresses, and numbers to disappear on the screen due to the way that things are encoded. That is to say, when this has been tuned with RHLF, either through instruction tuning or chat tuning. Uh -huh. They have things with angle brackets, which is then given to the underlying system so that this thing can distinguish between input and output. Okay. Uh, let's see, replace all names with the and other sensitive information with there we go. Let's see what this does. So anyway, this, this is just impressive. We've, you know, obviously I I, I had downloaded a, a llama <laughs> while, while that's running. I had downloaded a, a local llama 7B quantized down to, to four, four bits. And I will tell you, you, if you ask it the same question, it really doesn't do as well. So it's nice to see that this 13B model is doing so much better. And I don't, I don't know how this is different than just the, the plain Llama 7B versus like there's some Llama models out there that are 13B as well. But this particular one caught my eye and seems to be doing pretty well. But here's an example. Um, it, it was able to, you know, pick out 123 Main Street, but you gotta be really specific with it. Like, I don't think, let's, let's just try this. Let's try this again. Let, I mean, let me put the same example in here and see if it runs, like with your concept of what we just typed over here. So, this, I mean, this is looking great, right? So let me try. There are a number of things that you can do to cause a difference between similar sized models. The simplest ones to explain would be, I talked about before, instruction tuning and chat tuning. Mm -hmm. there, is also, there is also a great deal of information on scaling the difficulty of the training data. That is to say, when it's expressing examples about something, if you first train on simple examples and then on more complex models, it tends to absorb that information better. There is the diversity of the training set and the fine tuning set. Okay. And there is the quantization strategy. GPDQ is the latest in a long line of different ways to efficiently quantize models, that is to say, 
compress them into a smaller space. Uh, in previous models, score objectively lower, as in they decrease in IQ points as you decrease the size at a faster rate. All right, let me let me try this one exactly like we had there. Uh, try to say that again. I I didn't. I don't know if I got all of that. So yeah. Like, so like I'm just saying, if you, if I go on the leaderboard of Hugging Face and look up any Llama 13B versus this particular one, like let's go over to the leaderboard, um, right here. Sorry, my computer's like really slow, crunching down. So like, what what are you saying? Like there, you know, this Llama 30B is below performance of the the one I'm using well it's it's right it's right in there oh here yeah okay here's mine yeah so so what so so what were you saying I mean llama 30b is like below this this 13b like that's amazing what 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 did they do do you think make a complicated thing simple they used better training data they oh. thought the thing more diverse sets of topics they did it in a more measured way, and they did it in a way that maps better to how humans communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Let's see if this does it. <laughs> Wait. So anyway, this this is what this kind of bottom of the bottom of the barrel uh 7b did it's <laughs> the <laughs> i asked it to redact stuff from the diary and it just <laughs> just said diary <laughs> and, then, and then now i actually hit enter again and it's like you know going off <laughs> just talking to itself so you, you can see like this would not be an acceptable outcome right here right <laughs> ask it to redact and it just says diary in brackets <laughs> yeah no it's very it's very important to test double double check and even triple check your results when you're working with these systems you can't just go by the number of parameters or the strategy used mm -hmm. well, this is one of the reasons why it's so important to help build objective testing benchmarks that aren't tied to any particular framework model or specific scenario that would give one model an advantage over the other. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this, this looks great. So basically this, this is this model right here it scores an overall 57. And I know there's a little bit smarter models way up here, but but truly, we spent about $35, you know, clicking these things and trying to deploy them by, you go right here and you, you say deploy. Uh, some inference, we were doing inference endpoints. I mean, we didn't try SageMaker or Azure or anything like that. Maybe it would work, but we, we did this. We did AWS. Um, you know, the thing took like, you know, and we did... Um, advanced and let's see no we didn't yeah we, we did n8 quantization so you know just trying to make it you know smaller we just left all these check boxes the way it came and ultimately i don't know we spent 15 dollars 20 dollars on this model watching it take what an hour to start up hour and a half in some cases yeah, and then it would have this error, and I don't remember what the error was, but it just it wasn't fruitful. So it's just it's just kind of interesting, and I would really like to try this model out. I mean, I'm I'm sure this model would would be just as intelligent and uh, and and do great, but that was not working. So we kind of worked our way down different models and tried some out. I mean, a lot of these models would probably be great, but right now for our particular task, we're moving private health data, this Vicuna 
Thirteen B is going to be great. And um, let's see how much energy I got left. It was seven percent. Um, I guess the other thing to think about is show me how I know in my collab how much memory this is taking up. Is it is it right here? Is this what's going on? Yeah. Should have your RAM, your disk space, and your GPU memory. Where is I don't really see my GPU memory, so I want to know. You're oh. gonna have to click on the icon. Oh, okay. So, okay. So this is what I'm looking at. We're only using 9.8 out of 15. Um, how did you find out what kind of card they're using? Is that hard you to can do? Use an NVIDIA SMI command which will list all NVIDIA cards on the machine. Okay, uh, you're talking Greek to me, man. Where would I even type a command in here? Is it over here somewhere or what? The first thing you would need to do is pause the line that's currently running the UI because you can only want, run one cell at a time in Collab. So do I need to hit stop? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna hit stop. And it is stop keyboard interrupt going okay. tunnel. Okay, so all right, how do we find out what's under the hood? What, what what's running our model? Absolutely. Next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to run some code. So if you would go over to the code icon in the corner with a plus next to it and click on that, we're gonna get a new code cell. Uh, sorry, man. Where are you talking about? Where in this, this little notebook do you want me to do this? Just under the orange CO up in the top corner. Plus okay. code. Oh, okay. You're right. I see it. Awesome. Cool. So the next thing we need to know about Collab is there are two things that can run. You can run commands, actually three things. Commands, magic commands, and vanilla Python, mm -hmm. as well as with imports and Python just runs by itself. Magic commands run with a percent symbol and terminal commands, which is what we're gonna be doing right now, run with a shebang in front of them. Okay. So if you type shebang NVIDIA dash SMI, that's gonna use NVIDIA's drivers to show you exactly what you're running. Did you say dash, NVIDIA dash? Yes. Did it, oh, I see, and you just hit run, got it. Boop. Yeah. So, that's a T4, like we got last time? Yep. Okay. That's gonna be 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which corresponds to how much storage space you have on your card or running a model. Okay. Note that you can use exotic strategy is like GGML or RAM offloading to get this smaller, mm -hmm. but for reasonably fast inference times, usually you're going to want to load the entire model onto the card's memory. Okay. So, you know, might not be wise just to run out and get a, a T4, but you can get it for you know, 1100 bucks or so. Yeah. You know, then you have to kind of got some way to cool them and stuff like that because they don't have an integrated fan, but like something along that line and, and this right here talks about um, let's see how do you how do you measure general was it how do you measure the cores or the speed in general what's what's the most accurate ah, um, uh, simple simple way to do that in general unfortunately, unfortunately there's no simple standard for that as every card provider has a slightly different architecture and runs their cards in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. uh, you can absolutely benchmark the core count, although that might not be relevant against NVIDIA versus AMD versus, say, Arc or Mac integrated memory. Okay. Okay. Well, obviously, we can look up, like, on some other sites, like, is this the $1,000 I'd want to spend to run this model locally? You know, but obviously, we only need about 16 gig card. So that's cool. That's really cool. So, all right. Well, I guess that kind of wraps up our video. Uh, that's really neat. We got to look at, you know, how did we determine how much RAM, you know, a little command to kind of
kind of see what they were running on. These are really efficient wattage-wise. That's, that's amazing. Um, okay, cool. Cool. And basically ran a nice little nice little UI that, that did what we want. So I think I think we can tell the client maybe they'll be able to run on this model. I, I'd still get a faster, I'd probably still go newer generation than a, than a T4. Um, Absolutely. But you have to remember this is not at scale yet. Uh, you mean T4 is not running as fast as it can, or you mean we would build a machine probably with much larger no, scales? I mean, in this particular demo, we only have one user on one instance <laughs> it's using up the entirety of this GPU space, or at least oh, right. uh, around 10 gigabytes of it in a production setting. You would most likely need to have multiple users pinging multiple different GPUs at the same time. That'll be interesting. So maybe when we get that part of the testing, we'll, we'll look at like, I mean, I don't know. I've seen a couple of philosophies of sometimes it's better have just multiple boxes just with if 16 gig can run this model, you know, have a bunch of 16 gig cards. Although I'm not totally convinced that that is really better than just to get an A100 and, or an A30 or 40 or whatever, because I, I know those production GPUs, you know, you can, you can partition off the GPT, GPU and serve a lot of people. So I guess maybe we'll do another video when we get to that part, or we'll probably do another video when we get to the, I don't know, we're going to put a RESTful U, UI around, around this and put some logic around it and kind of box it up. So maybe, maybe we'll do a video on that because right now I think we only have a couple more minutes on this, but I think uh, this is fine this runs on collab, but we want to run this on AWS. So just real quick, like a minute of what's the journey to get this model housed and, you know, with APIs around it that are useful in AWS. What's your thoughts? I think, I think we might have ran out of Zoom time. I'm not sure. No? No? No, we have four minutes left. Are you on mute, Arthur? Let's see. I think I lost him. Do, 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 do. Oh. You're muted. Hey, Arthur. Are you there? <laughs> oh. Oh well. I guess we'll do. I guess we'll do another video at, at another time. But anyway, that, that's the model. That's what we were able uh, to do, and uh, we'll put this little. This little notebook, because uh, I know Arthur definitely edited. Um, there was a much messier notebook that had just like lots of extra lines that he didn't need, and so this is the version that he edited down. So we'll see if he wants to make like a Docker or something. Put this in Docker. Put some RESTful APIs around it. Maybe get that working on AWS. Not sure. So great. Um, thanks for watching. See you again.